Hello everyone and welcome back to our continuing series on understanding CBET. And we have been looking at uh, how do we develop written assessments. And today we are going to focus on uh, both practical and briefly look at uh, the TVET CEDA guidelines on written assessments. So what does TVET CEDA say about uh, how do we develop written assessments? So basically, I'm going to focus on uh, if you're developing your formative assessments. Of course, there's no uh, rule on what extent should you assess when it comes to learning outcomes. But basically, um, when you're talking about summative assessments, then there are certain things that we need to look at. And one is uh, looking at the structure of the assessment tool. So what type of question should you assess or use to assess rather learning outcomes? So you're dealing with uh, level three, then uh, you should focus on uh, three sections, I mean two sections of uh, section A, which is carries about 20 marks and section B is 30 marks. So section A should be on true, false and matching questions. And uh, section B should be on short answer questions. Now what it gives you a maximum of how many should you set. And the total marks is uh, 50 marks. So if you're doing level four, again, it has two sections, 10 marks and 40 marks. Section A should be MCQs. Of course, section B, short answer questions. So you're moving down to level five. You have section A, B, and C with multiple choice questions, short structured question, and the extended or essay questions. And level six, and this is where our interest is based on uh, the unit of learning outcome you'll be looking at is uh, you focus on two sections, section A and B, 40 marks and 60 marks respectively. So in section A, we're going to do short answer questions. Again, focus on the number of questions that you need to set. It should range between 10 to 15, but at the end of the day, it should be 40 marks. And then section B, 60 marks. That is an extended uh, or essay question. And that should be about four questions, but the candidate chooses three questions. So overall, you're going to have 100 marks. So when you have that in mind, of course, you're going to look at practical assessments. But it's good to understand that uh, for summative assessment, you need to assess at least 80% of the critical aspects. And our benchmark is occupational standards but our time is good you focus also on curriculum to get the scope of what the occupational standard is talking about when it comes to performance criteria so that you're within the scope of what is being asked and of course the time theory usually for varies within different levels so three and four is usually two hours and the level five and six usually uh, three hours of course practical tech between one hour to eight hours of course we need to talk about some of these which are regarded as theory assessments and which are regarded as practical assessments and uh, most important is what we just looked at in the previous video that there must be sufficient assessment items covering each of the six levels of Bloom taxonomy. It's very key, because that determines if exams, when moderated, it's either easy or difficult or within. So after moderation, which you're going to talk about, focuses on uh, the cognitive domain that we talked about. And most importantly is uh, when you are doing your 
questions. The setting of assessment item or questions should, shall be guided by a prepared table of specification. And of course, when you've already developed our written assessment, we'll now talk about table specification as we move. Um, the assessment we shall consist of assessment items of different levels of difficulty, low, moderate, high level of difficulty. And that will be based on your distribution, based on the cognitive domain or the blue taxonomy. Um, Something again I need to highlight is, uh, of course, you're going to use continuous numbering. So if one, section A is ending with 10, so section B will start with 11. So it's continuous numbering. Uh, this is where I want to talk about. A stem of the candidate's tool should not provide any clues. What does this mean? So before you actually set your questions, Usually it's good you give a, a statement about what you want to ask, but it should not be leading or giving a clue to, to what the candidate need to respond on. And that's what we call a stem. You're going to look at that practically so that you're able to uh, understand better what we mean by this statement. So it's good you understand the guideline for how you need to present your assessment tools when come to summative assessments. So let's dive in and um, populate at least four questions for level six. So I'll pull my, um, so this is formative. So I'm pulling my uh, performance criteria because PC weighting is only needed for formative assessments. But when you do your summatives, either you're called about by TVET CEDAC to develop assessment tools, they're not going to use performance criteria or ET. So we don't use that in uh, summative assessment, especially from uh, TVET CEDAC. These are basically uh, shows how you distribute your marks to those pieces that are critical for that unit of competency. So we are going to use this to develop our formative assessments because you already distributed our marks for theory and practical. So again, you have to refer which are your critical components and highlight them because at least 80% of the critical aspects need to be assessed. So it's always good to understand what are my critical aspects. So highlight those ones and at least have question that are able to assess that particular performance criteria. So I'll go ahead and uh, one of my uh, critical aspect is uh, on the unit of competency that we are still continuing with, perform methodological tests. And one of the performance criteria, and that is 1.1, if I go back to my OS, is my uh, my critical aspects. So again, I want you to go back and read this question. I mean, the performance criteria. And it says request form is received and interpreted. So look at the action verb that has been used. Received and interpretation. So basically, um, the candidate need to receive and interpret what is written. So what type of question should I now uh, base to assess receiving an interpretation. And uh, I'll just use my blank so that I'm able to construct a few questions based on that. So one, I'll uh, talk about uh, outline in four components. Well, about the request form because it is seven marks in my performance criteria I still have uh, three more 
for that so you can put your marks there so here i'm requesting for four marks so again you can either set a question carrying seven marks or you can as well distribute so that you're able to meet the seven marks you can be in section a or in section b so so far i still have three marks that i'll utilize so outline four so i'll bold this so that is uh, clear again i want you to see the type of verbs i'm using so outline is basically i'm assessing knowledge i just want to understand if the student understand what is contained within uh, a laboratory requisition form again i'll do that for the rest of my performance criteria for that unit of competency So basically, uh, I've developed a few questions based on my performance criteria and the scores allocated, of course, using my occupational standard. So I've covered uh, at least five of the performance, uh, critical performance criteria or critical aspects of that unit of competence. So there are different types of questions that focuses on different uh, cognitive domain can see the outline, give, state, describe, explain, okay? But when I talk about developing a statement before giving a question, it is, for example, the wrong patient results might occur during laboratory testing. Describe four common laboratory errors in pre-analytical phase. So this is what we call a STEM. You develop a question, I mean a statement, before now you pull up the question. So the question is, or the consideration rather should be, these statements should not be, uh, should are not able to give a clue to the candidate about probably a presumptive answer on the question that is going to be asked. For example, you could rephrase this like, uh, Transcription errors is one of the laboratory errors that occur uh, during laboratory testing. Describe four common laboratory errors in pre-analytical phase. Already have given a clue on uh, the type of response that is needed. So basically, you can distribute your marks based on the number of questions that you need. And you should focus on... Uh, your performance criteria waiting for formative uh, assessments because this is some of the evidence that uh, as part of your POEs that you need to file to support your formative assessments during uh, external verification. So basically, this is how we develop uh, written assessments and uh, you can do based on uh, which learning outcomes that need to be assessed during uh, sessions. So in our next, you're going to see how then, because uh, I've already developed one, we'll use this now to, to develop uh, what we call table of specification. And that is a very critical component so that you're able to see uh, the type of question you have distributed. Are they too 
easy or too hard for the students. So we're going to look at moderation and one of the document that's needed attached with your written assessment is your table specification. So you're going to see what Tibet CDAC also need for their summative assessment. So we're going to talk about again critical aspects as part of the table specification that we need to submit with our written assessments. So in our, in our next video, we're going to focus on uh, how do we develop practicals for core unit of competencies and what are the supporting um, assessor's guides and that is observation uh, checklist. So thank you again for subscribing and supporting the channel.